I'm Jessica Peresta, host of the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Support for today's episode comes from the Institute of Education Innovation and the 2023 Soup's Choice Awards, the only education industry awards judged exclusively by school district superintendents. Coming up on episode 231 of the House of Ed Tech, I am sitting down with Fonz Mendoza from My Ed Tech Life. We chatted at ISTE, we talked about podcasting and how he creates his podcast, and I think you should be podcasting too. Let's strike up the band. Welcome to the House of Ed Tech. My name is Chris Nessie. The House of Ed Tech launched in 2014, giving me the opportunity to speak with teachers, leaders, and creators so you can more effectively integrate technology, strengthen your pedagogy, and have more confidence in your classroom and school so you can make an impact. Get involved with the podcast by visiting my website, chrisnessie.com. Using technology isn't difficult, and this is where it begins. This is the House of Ed Tech. That's right. Using technology is not difficult. Just give it a try. 231 times we're going to say that. And here we are. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm glad that either way, you are making time to make House of Ed Tech a part of your anytime, anywhere professional development. It is August 20th. If you're listening to this as I release it, you might be listening to it a little bit later into the future, but school is right around the corner. As I sit here, I've got plans later this week to go to my school and do some setup and get the classroom ready, get the podcast studio ready for the start of the school year. Football is starting where I'm, you know, doing the public address announcer thing and I got to say, for the last couple of years, summer seemed to just kind of fly by, and this summer seems to have gone at just the right pace. I have no issue. I don't feel like I'm going to be gypped summer vacation. I've done the right amount of work around the house, had some fun with my family, my friends, and had just also the right amount of time, I think, to just kind of do nothing. And despite Not despite, uh, I don't know what I want to say, but I've been able to bring you this podcast and uh, we continue here with our conversations from ISTE 2023 series. One of the last conversations I had was with Alfonso Mendoza and he is the host of My Ed Tech Life. Just a great guy. We had never met in person, but we had a really fun conversation from the Canva Mobile Studio as you will hear. So I'm looking forward to playing that conversation for you. Uh, But first, let's get into this episode's EdTech Thought, which I I teased it. There's a theme here. Pay attention. Here we go. For this episode's EdTech Thought, I come with a simple, yet, for some, a profound question. Why haven't you tried podcasting yet? It's not an accusation, just genuinely curious. You see, in a world, I can't help when I, when I write things, that, that that's what I see. <laughs> in a world dominated by visuals, the power of voice often gets overlooked. Yet, in our day-to-day, It's the voice that carries our stories, our emotions, our knowledge, and our perspectives. And dare I say it, there is magic in our voice. We live in a time where technology has given us unparalleled opportunities to share our voices with the world. Platforms where a single voice can echo across the world, finding like-minded people 
sparking debate, and sometimes challenging our very perspectives. Podcasting is one such tool that harnesses this power. It's accessible more than ever, it's authentic, and it's very, very versatile. For educators, consider this. What better way to have your students engage with the world than to have them voice their thoughts, debate ideas, and develop their analytical and communication skills? A podcast can be a classroom without walls, an avenue where students not only learn, but also teach. They can explore history by interviewing grandparents, discuss literature by analyzing their favorite books, or dive into science by exploring discoveries. For those considering podcasting as a personal venture, ah, that's exciting. Understand that every voice has unique value. Maybe you've been holding back because you think there are already too many podcasts out there. Or perhaps you doubt if anyone would want to listen to you. But remember, there's only one you. Your stories, your knowledge, your passions, and your experiences are unique. And there's an audience out there, somewhere, waiting to connect with that. Also, podcasting doesn't require a grand studio or expensive equipment. Many renowned podcasters started with just a simple microphone, maybe just their phone, and a genuine desire to share their voice. It's about authenticity, not perfection. And let's address the elephant in the room, okay? Fear. Fear of judgment, fear of making mistakes, fear of the unknown. But what if we shifted our perspective? What if every mistake was a lesson, every judgment an opportunity for growth, and the unknown just a realm of possibilities? Let me leave you with this. Whether it's to foster critical thinking in your students, to share your personal tale, to learn, or to inspire, podcasting can be the platform you never knew you needed. Today, I encourage you to take a step forward. Because in the vast world of voices out there, yours deserves to be heard as well. If you're curious to learn more about podcasting, I recently released my book, I Like to Podcast, and You Will Too, A House of Ed Tech Guide to Podcasting. Check it out. It's available for Kindle. It's also available physically. Go to chrisnessy.com slash I Like to Podcast and make the best choice for you. And if you need an extra little push, let's chat one-on-one. -on -one. I want to help you start your podcast or help you to get your students podcasting. And that's my EdTech thought. All right, we have reached the featured content segment of this episode. Again, going to be playing back a conversation I had at ISTE 2023 with Alfonso Mendoza. Had a lot of fun. Get your pencils ready. And again, like I just mentioned in the EdTech thought, consider podcasting for yourself or with your students. Maybe that's my real goal here is to get you to podcast. I don't know. We'll see. We're going to figure this out together. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to Philly and let's talk to the Fonz. <laughs> And we're back here at ISTE Live 2023 from the, I like to say it, the Canva Mobile Studio. Thank you to Canva for letting me set up shop here and podcast. And I am joined by the incomparable fellow Edu podcaster, 
member of the Education Podcast Network. You know him. You love him. He's been on Podcast PD from my ed tech life, the Fonz, Alfonso Mendoza. Yes. Thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate it. This is my first ISTE, and it's wonderful to see you in person, meet you in person. We and touched each other. We hugged. I know. No. And the best thing I want to say, Chris, here in front of everybody at this event that I get to meet you, I, say, I want to say thank you because of you. I've been able to do what I have been able to do because you've never shied away from answering a question. You've never shied away from giving me feedback. You've never shied away from just telling me like, hey, try this or try that. And to me, that is huge because what I'm doing now is because of what you love to do and you just sharing that passion with me. Just, it's great. So thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I am so proud of what you do because you know, I've always said for years, like, would I love to be the only ed tech podcast that people listen to? Sure. But I also tell people I'm not the only one. And there are lots of people. You're, you're right at the top of that list of other people who are just as passionate and giving people a voice and sharing your story and learning and doing it in a way that I love, which is podcast. So thank you for what you do because you keep going. You're past episode 200 now. I've always said episode 100. You graduate podcast high school. 200, I think that's your podcast doctorate. <laughs> well, maybe, but we'll say that's And the you're going for the real doctorate, too. Yeah, we'll say that's the podcast uh, master's, and then 300 will be the doctorate. We'll, say, we'll leave it at that. I'm, I'm putting it on myself. <laughs> All right. So we'll get there. We're, we're 92 episodes away. So <laughs> it, uh, only 93 episodes, and we're going to try and crank out three a week based on my, doctor, my real doctoral studies. But, you know, it's been an amazing journey, an amazing ride, and just the fact that I've been able to be here and see people that have been on the show that make an impact on my life as an educator, as, a, as an instructional coach. But then beyond that, that real-life meeting where it's a genuine, authentic relationship and connection, and that has meant the world to me, and it's just really filled my bucket. And even getting feedback from some past guests, and I, I don't know about you, Chris, but as myself... I rarely get a lot of feedback, even though I'll ask. And I mean, I'll get feedback from you, but from a guest to tell you like, hey, it was a great experience, the way you made me feel, how comfortable everything flowed. It was something great. And it just kind of really says, hey, you know, just keep doing what you're doing and everything's good. So, yeah. And, and for the listener who is maybe not familiar with what Fonz does with My Ed Tech Life, he does his a little differently than mine, whereas you live stream your recordings. And I've always, I mean, I talk about that. I do that with Podcast PD, but... I feel like with this, I got to, I don't know, I just need to have a little more control over it. So you, you take that risk and, you know, you, you do it differently. And that's really always fun to see on Saturday mornings, you know. You, you, or Monday evenings or Tuesday evenings or really any time that I can schedule that guest, we make it happen. So that's huge. But, yeah, a, a little different, like I said. Uh, I think one of the things, too, in being live is just really we understand tech happens. So there'll be times where we disconnect and so on. But. You know, it's it's just real. It's it, not that it's not authentic conversation when you're not live, but it, it's just really cool because you just get different reactions. You get to see the people. You get to just and, and for as a podcaster, you get to kind of read a little bit of where the conversation is going and when you need to steer it, when you need to maybe continue and build up that conversation. And it's just been great. And uh, I've absolutely loved every experience that I've gotten from it. And it's been very fruitful and very productive. And more than anything, uh, like you said, it's just about connecting educators and creators one show at a time and just to continue to inspire them by listening to a guest, hearing their experiences, and just finding value. I mean, it, what more can you ask for? I mean, I guess it's that teacher heart of wanting to make an impact in the world. And if you do it one guest at a time, it's all good. One guest at a time, it'll be. <laughs> one guest, one listener, one download. Absolutely. What's going on, you ed tech enthusiast, you? Are you ready to make a real impact in the world of education? Well, I've got some exciting news for you. It's that time of year again. The Institute for Education Innovation is back with the 2023 Soup's Choice Awards, the education industry's most prestigious recognition of excellence in ed tech. What sets the Soup's Choice Awards apart is that it's the only education award judged exclusively by school district superintendents. These are visionary leaders who are at the forefront of driving innovation and positive change in education. And this is your chance to shine 
and get your groundbreaking product or edtech solution in front of the nation's most innovative superintendents. The process is simple. Superintendents will carefully evaluate and recognize the best in each category. Imagine getting valuable feedback from these top education experts. It will be a game changer for your product's success. And don't worry about breaking the bank. The Soup's Choice Awards offers a low-cost opportunity to showcase your innovations to an audience that truly matters. But the clock is ticking, my friends. The deadline to enter is just around the corner, August 24th. Now let me highlight some of the exciting award categories for 2023. They're offering the AI-powered education solution, best gamification in learning, and excellence in special education, just to name a few. Whether your focus is on college and career readiness, family engagement, or keeping kids safe, there's a category for you to shine. So what are you waiting for? This is your moment to make a difference and impact in the lives of students and educators across the nation. Head over to the website soupschoice.com right now to learn more and enter the Soup's Choice Awards. Together, let's shape the future of education one innovative solution at a time. And don't miss the deadline, August 24th, and hopefully we'll see you at the Soup's Choice Awards later this year. And thank you to the Institute for Education Innovation for supporting the House of Ed Tech. And now, back to the show. Speaking of steering the conversation, <laughs> um, let's talk ed tech for a second. Yeah. What are you looking forward to? We're here at ISTE. I refer to it affectionately as ed tech Christmas. What are you looking forward to that you've learned or seen that you're ready to share with your teachers or implement into your workflow as an educator in the coming school year? What are you excited about? Well, actually, you know, a lot of what I've seen here is are some of the things that to a minor scale we've been doing. And what I've been excited, though, is finding some tools that are doing it a little bit better so we can kind of fix the flow of things. And, you know, right now I just stopped at a booth where they had it was a, like a pocket translator. And I remember being a teacher where I had to have an iPad type and then the student has to type and so on. And this is just a little device where I can speak into it. The student listens in their language, they speak it to it in their language, and I get that immediate response right away. And it, it was such a small form factor where I don't have to have the student right next to me and make them feel like, oh my gosh, like everybody's looking at me. Like they can feel part of the class. I'm not singling anyone out. And I thought that that was great. So I'm just really excited about that. Of course, you know, the big talk is AI and everybody's doing AI. And, or what, what is this AI you speak of? No, I, I don't know. I don't know. But look, I'm, I'm going to quote something from yesterday. Uh, we went to an event and they mentioned it's not about the AI. We need to also focus about the HI, which is the human intelligence. And that to me just spoke volumes because as much as we love the hype and as educators and, and innovators, we want to be the first to try the new tool. But oftentimes... We go really fast, and I feel sometimes we're very addicted to tech as teachers, and we were so excited about it, us, and then when we go give it to the students, they're, like, they're not as excited because maybe it's not what they need, but yet we want to force it in there. So it's just things to really think about, and now I'm saying the, the technology is great for us as adults, you know, lesson planning, things that you can do, and even for myself as a podcaster, um, producing uh Social media, all of that is great. And even for some of my workflow at work, it's great. But I, I'm still yet to really see how effective it is within a classroom setting, like maybe for a whole year. Because there may be some teachers that implement it a little bit better, but maybe they have the right set of circumstances where they can. And it may be very different from district to district. It just all depends. But, you know, it is something that's here and it's going to get better we were just talking, uh, my friend DM and I, do we think that this might be like the, that Web3 hype that we went through last year and then it just kind of dies down? We'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, it, a lot of great things happening. Everybody's popping in, uh, you know, those writers and so on in their platforms. And I, I want, really want to see like teacher effectiveness. And I'm going to be looking out for educators that are using it and just to share that magic too. Like what can we be doing different? And so we'll see. But of course, Canva, I, lo I definitely love their text to image game changer and that's huge for us as creators it's huge for the kids too being able to 
create their learning, take ownership. And, you know, it, really, it's Swiss Army knife, honestly. So yes. it's a really great tool. Two things. One, to go back to the HI, the human element or the human interaction. Uh, I think that's really critical because the way I, I frame it in my head is, you know, whether it's ChatGPT or insert AI tool here, it's just a tool. A hammer doesn't build a house. The drill doesn't make the hole. The saw doesn't cut. We've got to do something with it. So when I talk to teachers about AI tools, it's, you know, you've got to do it. You've got to work with the prompts, right? We're going to see prompt uh, generators. That's going to be a career for some students. Uh, there are adults who are selling, you know, making money being prompt engineers, right? You know, so that human piece, we've got to be involved. It's critical thinking at its finest. It is. If it doesn't do what you want, you've got to rework it. And, and one of the things that you mentioned, the prompt engineer, they said, oh, this job's already obsolete. And now what they're talking about is they're talking about uh, like automation engineers, that it's not even writing a prompt because now you've got AI that'll write prompts for you to get you what you need. So you really don't need that human element. However, they are stating, um, Allie Miller, she's great. If you follow her on, on Instagram, she mentioned that it's automation engineers. It's really people that are able to take that tool, that automation, and put it into like Zapier to say, okay, once I give you this spreadsheet with all the student test scores, now you're going to have it do this next step and this next step, and it's just going to automate everything to where everybody or every department gets the information that they need to make those decisions for the students and what they can do for instruction and things of that sort. And, of course, in the industry sense, it's going to be big. So... You still need that human element, you know? It's like there, there isn't a tech tool out there that's, gonna, that's quite perfect, and I don't think there'll ever be. Uh, but we just really have to, ex you know, share this with our students, share it with other educators, and like you said, use the right tool for the right job, and don't just try and just, because it's the next novel thing, implement it. Because is it going to be really helping the student achieve what they need to achieve? You know, so it's just one of those things. Just one of those things. <laughs> Now, for your podcast, let's go back yeah. to Maya Tech Life right. for just a couple of minutes. And I want to thank you for taking time here at ISD. I know you're shaking hands, kissing babies, the whole thing, <laughs> which is great. Um, what is an episode, if somebody's not listened to your podcast yet, what's a favorite episode where they could jump in that they should listen to first? Uh, and you don't have episode. to say mine. <laughs> favorite episode, that's back episode 17, which is actually really great. You know, So if you want to learn about podcasting, Go to episode 17 with Chris Nessie, and you're going to see, like, I mean, you're going to see the growth from where I first started to where I am now. But, again, it's because of friends like Chris that help you and build you up and just getting 1% better every day. But I would recommend, honestly, right now, because it is the topic that everybody's talking about, if you go back to episode probably, like, 184 on where we just start talking about AI, you're going to see... AI founders of companies like Eduade, you've got uh, Magic School AI, you've got other educators that are explaining how they've used AI, the implications of AI, you've got Lena uh, here from the Canva booth who is on there too talking about CTE and the future of work and it's great conversations that people need to listen to to kind of start getting an idea of where this can go and maybe how they can implement it into their practice or sharpen their skills in that practice. Like I always say, iron sharpens iron. All those episodes would be great for you all to jump on in and get the lowdown on AI. And then, of course, you get to listen to me and listen to the guests and hopefully get inspired. Awesome. Now, while I'm not entirely sure when this conversation right now is going to go out, um, but as we as you look ahead to the summer and even into the fall, do you have any upcoming guests or topics that you're planning and you're excited about? Yes. Okay. So I'm very excited because now I am going to be on break for the next two weeks, which is the first two weeks of July. Again, we don't know when this episode. What are gonna you going to do for two weeks not podcasting? No, no. I am going to be podcasting. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing solo episodes. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be reflecting, obviously, on the ISC experience. Everybody, he listened to my feedback. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to be doing some solo episodes, and I'm going to be reflecting, obviously, on the ESD experience, reflecting on AI, my thoughts, my own personal ideas, my own personal views that, you know, it, it you may think like, oh, yeah, he's going to be all about it, but you may be surprised. You know, we definitely want to have those serious conversations and really see the other side that maybe people are not thinking about because we get really excited um, but yeah, definitely solo episodes, and I did get that great advice from Chris and another guest of mine who told me, and I, I guess I'll take up a little bit of time, but he said, hey, Fonz, 
Have you ever tried doing some solo episodes? Because when I listen to solo episodes, it's like I like I, I listen to podcasts for the experience, and I see that person as the experts. And he said, you do a great job at amplifying everybody else's voice, but I never hear yours. And it was kind of like a sign. That's what I said, too. Yes, exactly. So it was just like, you know, I heard Chris say it. And then, of course, uh, I heard Andrew. I'll, I'll give him a shout out. Andrew Connolly said it. And so I'm going to do solo episodes during the break. And maybe I'll just start mixing those in. They'll still be live. Um, but, you know, it'll just be me. So you'll get to see my mean mug. There. Let, me, let me just say, <laughs> when you're by yourself, live is tough. Yeah. You think so? <laughs> I'll try it out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because there's nobody to talk to. But so you got to be very prepared to go live with a monologue. Sounds great. We'll <laughs> definitely do that. We'll give it a shot. And like I said, I'm all about the experience. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah. Excited about that. And then, of course, once I, my regular school schedule goes back to normal, uh, you know, get, having some guests and maybe doing two a week instead of three. But as you know, I just get very excited. I find somebody on Twitter that I say, I need to have you on because I want to amplify what you're doing. That'll happen. But I definitely want to focus more a little bit on solo episodes and really giving you my thoughts and ideas of what we're seeing and where the future of education can go. That's right. His website is myedtech.life. And social media where people can connect with you. Social media, all socials at my ed tech life, at my ed tech life, and of course our website like Chris shared. And just again, the show, if you've never heard of it, it's just our goal amplify voices, but it's really uh, connecting educators and creators one show at a time. Excellent. And of course, thank you for also being a part of the Education Podcast Network. Excellent. Crossover. All right. <laughs> thank you. All right. We'll talk to you soon, Fonz. Thank you for listening to this episode of the House of EdTech podcast. I had a ball putting together here the 231st episode of the show. If you're not subscribed or following the podcast, consider making it a part of your anytime, anywhere professional development. Click subscribe or follow if you haven't done so already. To get the most out of the House of EdTech, be sure to check out the show notes for this episode. You can find links to the resources mentioned in the episode by going to chrisnessy.com slash 231. It's episode 231. I genuinely enjoy hearing from you, and I value your feedback and your perspectives. Whether you have thoughts or questions about a recent episode or any other edtech-related topic, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email me, feedback at chrisnessy.com, or you can leave a voicemail at chrisnessy.com slash voicemail. Your input helps me create better content and improve the podcast. So please share your thoughts with me. I am eager to connect with you. If you know someone who would benefit from listening to the House of EdTech, I encourage you to share it with them. Spread the word on social media. Use word of mouth. Your efforts will help me reach more people and more educators can get value from the show. And I want to thank you in advance for sharing the podcast. Lastly, I invite you to become an awesome supporter. If you're getting value from my content, I am incredibly grateful for the ongoing support of the following people. Jeff Herb, Peggy George, Dan Gallagher, Mike Messner, Matt Miller, Brian Carpenter, and Aaron Cummings. If you get value from the show, become an awesome supporter. It's super simple. Go to chrisnessy.com slash awesome. Your generosity goes a long way in helping me to continue delivering exceptional content to you and the entire House of EdTech community. As I said at the beginning of the episode, summer is almost over, but I've got another great conversation to share with you. This one didn't take place at ISTE, but it is taking place because of ISTE. Episode 232 is going to be a conversation I had with Debbie Tannenbaum. We're talking techie notes and sticky learning. It's going to come your way on August 27th, 2023. Until next time, I want to thank you for learning with me. And of course, as always, remember, using technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try.
And of course, I just want to tack on a special little announcement here at the end of the episode. Behind the Mic, Voices of the EPN, a new podcast from the Education Podcast Network, of which I am the founder, is launching on September 1st. I'd love it if you'd go over and subscribe to that podcast so you get episode one as soon as it hits. Go to edupodcastnetwork.com slash BTM for Behind the Mic. And you'll have all the options there to subscribe wherever you like to listen to podcasts. And I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.